morning guys back here at it again at the farm yesterday uh, we started putting out the uh, liquid lime and found out that you know the spray coverage not the spray rate but the spray coverage because uh, wasn't good because of the um, you know that the, the uh, rye and and our wheat uh, is so tall some of it's you know five six feet tall and the sprayer the spray just was not able to you know penetrate past that so you know unlike a plowed or a um you know a disc field where you know you're putting that stuff down before you put the plants uh or the seed down on the ground right before you sow your seed uh you know you got that good um nothing obstructing that well that wasn't the case so i what i did yesterday i elected to um i seeded into all of it uh and then we crimped it and uh and now i'm going back over uh, so we, we uh, seeded in all of our summer release, and then I went back in um, and crimped all of it down, and a lot of it crimped really well. And uh, this now we're we're back at it again, doing the lime. Now that everything is laid down, uh, now that I can put, uh, you know, get that coverage that I needed uh, without it being obstructed. So we're back uh, at it again, putting some more lime in the tank here. Uh, so what I found yesterday, guys, with the uh, what I found yesterday um, with the plot start, the liquid lime here, uh, the concern was with the gentleman that did the corn here, I left him some when I was gone on client trips, and the concern was that, um, you know, it was not going through a sprayer real well. And I think the reason is, as we come to the conclusion yesterday, I didn't have a problem with it at all, uh, maybe a little bit right at the end when you could tell it was, you know, um, kind of drawn from the bottom of the tank. Um, but I think the problem was he has he had a little glyphosate left in his tank that, that wasn't cleaned out and we mixed it. I believe it did a, like a chemical reaction because it kind of made a white foamy substance and really ended up doing, um, you know, kind of gumming things up in a sprayer. So we're going to try it again today. I guess I haven't even turned it on yet. I shouldn't say that it didn't, you know, gum up in this either. But um, I didn't have it yesterday when I sprayed uh, half of all the, you know, the plot. So doing another... Uh, another dose today on the stuff that we didn't uh, get done yesterday and and now we're you know going back into uh, kind of um, plot mode here if you will to wrap these up to get these done so as of today uh, weather dependent here the summer release will be on all five acres of food plots and we will be um, off and running uh, so one thing to keep in mind guys so this this video here is to kind of touch on this time of the year i'm getting all these you know what should we be planting and when and you know the answer to that is guys i the more i the more i use and get familiar with and really try to study over the years the importance of biomass and uh, you know on a food plot like we talked before guys there's not too many food plot strategies around the country that i don't believe need such a, 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 a strategy such as what the summer release offers you and i'm not just saying that i don't make a penny from you know uh, the green cover seeds at all i think the work that doc uh, grant woods has done with them uh, the the blend is pretty close there's some things in there that you know maybe i wouldn't have if i would design it myself but but i can tell you this uh, the clients that I've been on this year that have already put that into production, they, you know, before I got to them, the summer release looks amazing. The clients that had it last year that I was on late in the year that have it, I'm talking three, four, five feet of biomass. The whole moral of this is this, guys. Your fall food plots start now this fall food plot strategy starts now because if you don't plant something, it can be as simple as buckwheat a rye right but if you don't plant something now you're not going to have anything to crimp down going into fall on your brassicas let's say your brassica blends to keep them safe through that drought period or or them hotter uh, periods later in the summer and you're going to have a fall or a failed fall food plot this system guys is one of you know one of the ways that i think by sharing this with you that a lot of food plotters a lot of deer hunters can be successful by you know simple process like you know putting the liquid lime out uh you know not having having to dump a bunch of uh back sweat equity i guess you know that's the reason i'm using this i have a horrible back and um you know i've seen it work so we're putting it out 
and you know whether we'll use the other st uh, step of this as far as the plot boost I don't know um, I'm gonna kind of gauge that on the how the you know plots look but with that being said one thing I do know is I do know that I'm giving everything I can possibly give to this summer release uh, so I have a good biomass going into the fall so now what where are we at you know so I got the lime out uh, half the lime I went ahead and or seeded and crimped the food plots and now you know top topping the rest of it with the with the uh, plot start uh, the liquid lime on the you know, on the rest of it getting that done today and then I I've got a decision to make because I've still got some undesirable let's say in the food plots that you know um, are kind of a weed let's say there's not a lot of them believe it or not I've had some comments on here it looks like a lot of work you know for a weedy food plot my food plots are not weedy they've just got some stuff that isn't really doing me a lot of favor now so I the decision I've got to make is do I now that it's all crimped do I spray or do I just come over and clip the top of that with a mower before it all gets started the deal is it's been so wet here I really don't want to get the tractor uh, neighbor's tractor there on that and uh, mow that right now so I think I'm going to do this year guys is now that the thatch is down that mulch layer is down crimped on top I may go around uh, this afternoon when I know the wind the rain is going to quit and I've got about three hours of, of no rain to let the herbicide work I might go in and spray some uh, spray some glyphosate on top of that down mat now just to give it a fresh start now this year will be the first year that i'm going into fall i will have that solid system of, of good usable um you know product let's say to crimp on top of my fall food plots because even right now that i'm crimping yes a lot of it's rye and wheat but i've still got some you know undesirables let's say uh so if i set that back i will have the potential to have a great solid uh summer release only system uh, to, to crimp down on top of my fall plots so it starts now the process is uh, it, it can seem a little lengthy but if you don't give it all you have now guys I really feel that that's why most fall food plots fail is because of that open soil effect open soil is weeds open soil is dry like I've always said guys you go back on videos and I'll say this time and time again to me, I don't care how dark your soil is, what it looks like from above or standing in it and, and you know, good onion ground, I call that, you know, down in the Midwest, black soil. Any soil is not healthy if it's dry. And the only way I know to get you to the finish line safely with a good stand of, of brassicas going into the fall is to simply have a cover crop to crimp down on top of those to, to, to keep the moisture um, under that so them plants have a chance, your fall brassica seeds have a chance to survive. So following along with this, now we are in full food plot mode here, let's say, and it's not just starting in August, a couple weeks before we plant our, our fall brassicas. Yes, this summer release has some summer food. It does have some soybeans. It does have the mung beans. It does have, uh, you know, it does have a lot of um, uh, sunflower, you know, but it's got buckwheat in it as well. It's got a little bit of everything. It's got a bunch of clovers, let's say, too. The, the clovers, yes, it's summer food, but it is helping the nitrogen in the, uh, you know, in the plots for, um, you know, it's just going to add nitrogen, uh, fixing our nitrogen going into the fall food plot. So that's in why, you know, I'm kind of hesitant to spray because I've got a lot of good clover base from last year working in the plots. So after the end of the, uh, you know, spraying the lime, uh, going back on that, I'll be able to really tell um, if I if spraying is for me. I'm not against spraying. I'm not against the chemical, but I just don't want to use it as much as I can. You know, I, I don't want to use it if I don't have to, right? So uh, kind of a learning curve here, um, even with me. The new system, one thing I found yesterday is I tried to seed. I've got the hitch on the front. I tried to seed my food plots uh, out the front with a with a uh, spin caster seeder um, it holds 80 pounds 
and I was I was hoping to do um, is uh, I was putting that uh, summer release on at 80 pounds an acre. I was hoping to to broadcast that out in front of me and crimp behind. The problem was is the broadcaster broadcast way wider than what my crimper is, and I couldn't keep up with it. So that didn't work. So I'm just going back to the old ways of spreading it first, then hooking the crimper up and crimping everything down. I think it's a great system if you have like a little compact tractor to put a spreader like that on the bucket it, or in the bucket, raise it up above of that, you know, five, six foot of, 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 of biomass, whether that's rye or summer release or whatever that is in front of you, broadcast it above it and then have a crimper that's about the same width. So maybe, you know, a 10 foot crimper or, or, you know, a 12 foot crimper behind you, you could really make some time one pass, right? Instead of multiple times over it, but multiple times over it with a side by side guys, uh, with a, you know, 2000 pound, um, you know, machine is a lot different than having, you know, a big tractor and, you know, compaction from a disc, all that stuff. So, uh, so thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, I'll continue to bring the updates. We got a lot of stuff coming. Um, I've got some more tree work to do. Um, I've got some mulching left to do. Um, uh, some some cedars coming out and some doe bedding areas. A lot of stuff going on here uh, at the farm. And then we'll be right back into our June client. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like the content, you know, I don't ask this a lot, but maybe like, share it. And uh, these food plot strategies that we're doing um, together, maybe everybody else can learn from them as well. Thanks.